click the bell icon to get latest videos from Ikeda. Hello friends, welcome back to the subject of machine design 1. Friends, we are right now solving numerical on bolted joints. And last time we had solved first numerical. In today's session, we are going to solve the second numerical. You can see the problem statement on your screen now. It says that select a suitable bolt for the load given as shown. So the load is given in terms of the drawing or the sketch or figure you can say. The sketch is very simple. This is how the plate is and where there are four bolts given with some proper numbers. You can see there is an extension on which the load is acting. The load magnitude is also given. We have also been given the eccentricity at which the load is acting, which is 0.3 meter. We have been given the center to center distance vertically and horizontally for the bolts. So there we get the exact information which is required for us. Additionally, we have been given material. So material of the bolt is given carbon steel whose yield strength is given 350 megapascal along with which we have been given factor of safety as 3.5. Friends, here most of the details have been given. So material we need not select separately. They have already given the material which is to be used with the properties. So let us begin with the given parameters. Let them, let us list them down. The given parameters are written in this manner. Very first thing is we will draw the vector diagram of the given bolts. Bolt number 1, 2, 3 and 4. Along with the bolt, if you look at the diagram, given diagram, where the dimensions are given 150 millimeter respectively between two bolt centers. That's why we can say that if we take out the center of this, the radial distance, this one, this one, this one and this one, which is R1, R2, R3 and R4 is equal, which is going to be half of this particular length. And hence R1, R2, R3, everyone becomes 150 divided by 2, which is 75 millimeter. Radius is an important factor which we need to consider in order to solve these numericals. Apart from this information, let us write the important parameters. Very first parameter is your given load. The load has been given 40 kN. Your eccentricity E is given 0.3 meter, which becomes 300 millimeter. Radius we already have figured out, apart from which material properties are given. Material property they have given is 350 megapascal. Along with which factor of safety is given. And hence the allowable value of stress which is going to be induced in this particularly the uh, tensile stress and the compressive stress. And hence. allowable value we use brackets for mentioning allowable values fos is an important parameter so if i solve this i'll get the value So 100 megapascal is the safe value that we need to consider. So with this given data, let us move ahead for solving this numerical. Very first thing which we consider during the design of any problem is the failure mode. Once we know the failure mode, we will be able to finalize the design mode, design aspects and that's how we will design the given problem. So there are two ways the product can be failed. The first way is the direct shear and second one is the sh secondary shear. Now, using these two in combination or separately, now students we have already seen this during learning these cases where the second case of 
bolted joints we consider shear which is direct and then secondary shear so direct shear we will designate using this particular letter and secondary shear using this particular letter direct shear formula is very simple which is the given load divided by number of bolts now we have been given certain number of bolts which we are going to consider which are four in number and that's why load which is 40 and number of bolts 4 and therefore your direct shear becomes 10 kilo newton now this is basically the direct shear force based on which we need to find out the shear stress there comes your secondary shear force which is given by this particular formula where f is the generalized one or the common or the average force which is acting on one bolt per unit length which is radius in this case and that is how the formula is derived to find out f value we already know that this is the empirical relation that we have let us substitute the given value we have got this expression of summation of radius square we have got four total radius square which are equivalent magnitude and that's why instead of this we will say it is four times only first radius square or second or third or fourth radius square so i'll say just the radius square because i'm adding them The radius value we already know which is 75 in our case so as i evaluate this value i'll get the answer so this is the average force and what will be the unit it is already specified force per bolt per unit radial distance that is how the f value we have obtained and that is how when we go for the secondary shear so the secondary shear will be obtained by this force into the radius and hence secondary shear force we get is forty kilo Newton so there we obtain both the forces which are shear in nature which are responsible for failure once it is done our problem becomes very easy let us move ahead there comes the force vector diagram which is very important very essential in our case because we need to understand which of the bolts is going to have or going to undergo the drastic changes the drastic shear example so in that case we have got four total bolts if you see the primary and the secondary forces shear forces acting on them have this nature so first bolt having both of them collinear second bolt is having one of them horizontal and one of them vertically downward similarly third bolt they have in opposite manner and fourth bolt in this manner we know that for this two they will cancel out each other's effect for this two they will have some resultant which we will show like this this is how the resultant force will be in this case this is how the resultant force is we can conclude that among these four bolts the bolt number one is experiences experiencing the maximum amount of shear force which is the addition of both of them and that's why we can say that bolt number one is to be designed for the failure because rest all the bolts will not undergo such kind of shear force which this is going to experience and that's why let us design bolt number one where the total force will be addition of both of them so their resultant force on bolt number one becomes their addition so we will add both of them we know that the first value was 10 and the second value we have obtained is 40 
So the total resultant force acting on bolt number one is 50. So 50 kilonewton is the maximum shear force that any of the bolts is going to experience. That is first thing. Let's move ahead for the diameter of bolt. DC is what the core diameter that we consider. So we will generally find out DC first and then we'll move ahead for the remaining dimensions. We know that shear stress is given by or the direct shear stress is given by the force applied force divided by area of cross section. So the formula becomes pi by 4 dc square. Now in this case we know that this value of shear stress will be obtained from the yield stress which is the allowable yield stress. Now, carbon steel is a kind of ductile material and we know that for almost every ductile material, there is a relationship between shear stress and the yield stress. Using this relationship, we will find out this value. So basically the allowable value of shear stress that is going to be induced or that will be allowed for the induction will be 50 Newton per millimeter square. The same value we can use here to find out the given value of diameter. So let us change this expression to the allowable value. So it becomes 50 times or 50 is equal to the force value. The resultant force we have obtained is 50 kilo Newton. So 50 into 10 raised to 3 divided by pi by 4 dc square which is our unknown. So when we solve this particular thing we get the answer we get the answer for dc somewhere around 36 millimeter. Now as far as DC is concerned, there is a particular relation that it shares with the outer diameter. Let me remind you that outer diameter is the nominal diameter of the given bolt. And that's why this is the relationship that we are going to use. And when I solve this particular expression, I get the value of outer diameter somewhere around 42.87 millimeter. Now there is another thing. We can't actually manufacture with this precision and it is not required. So we will go for the preferred series or the preferred number of bolts which are available for, for us. Now you can go for the selection of the bolts. Standard bolts. You can refer to the PSG 5.4 to where you can find out the value of DO which is somewhere around this. And once you refer to this you will find DO which is available next to this value is 45 millimeter. So that is how the bolt is selected. Now it's a secondary part to express another dimensions also which will be the core diameter, which will be the internal diameter and which will be the main diameter of the selected bolt along with the pitch. Of course these are secondary parameters you need not mention them but if you mention them that will give you another age of designing. So this is where the design get completes and there we find out the value of required bolt dimension thank you so much for watching this video if you like this video please subscribe to ekeda